Welcome to my webinar. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Um, I'd like to share some experiences that I've had over the last year returning to face-to-face -face classes and how I have included the Anatomosh table in my undergraduate anatomy and physiology courses. So just a little background to start with. Um, my name's Wendy Williamson, as Jake said. I did my undergraduate degree at the University of Virginia, and I have my master's and doctorate of physical therapy from Shenandoah University in Winchester, Virginia. I teach at the University of Lynchburg. I'm an assistant professor here, and I've been here um, at the school for about 10 years. Founded in 1903, the University of Lynchburg is a private university located in the central part of Virginia. It has a beautiful campus, it spans about 260 acres. And we're um, a little on the smaller side, so we have just over 3,000 undergraduate and graduate students. I am an assistant professor of biology and I teach in our School of Sciences. The School of Sciences is very popular and our undergraduate anatomy and physiology course series is one of the most heavily enrolled um, courses. We typically have about 130 students per semester in our course. Our students primarily major in biology, biomedical science, exercise physiology, and nursing. Um, this picture is of Hobbs Sigler Hall, and this is home to our School of Sciences, as well as the location of our classroom that houses our Anatomosh table. We are also really lucky for a small um, private institution to have a traditional cadaver lab, and I feel our students benefit greatly from the resources that we have. During the summer of 2019, we renovated our classroom into an active learning space. And at this point, we have seating for 24 total students. We have movable tables and chairs, so we're able to do a lot of different configurations in our classes. We have lots of whiteboard space um, and lots of storage for all of our models and equipment. At that time, we also piloted a new integrated anatomy and physiology course. So the course that I teach is a little bit different and we're able to meet three days a week for two hours at a time in this new active learning space. Our table is located in our renovated classroom. And I'm able to teach in this classroom with all of our resources. So my students really benefit from lecture paired with hands-on lab-based activity in a studio style course format. Unfortunately, during our spring 2020 semester, we moved fully online just like many other programs. But this did give me the opportunity to try different ways to incorporate the table into my newly created fully online course. One of the things I played around with was using table on cloud and I took table on cloud videos that I made and embedded them into the lecture videos that I was recording for my students since we were online. So this is an example of one of those videos. The following year, during the 2020-2021 school year, we changed yet again to a hybrid format. We had very limited face-to-face -face time, and so I decided to include the Anatomage ebook, which is shown here, so my students could still benefit from table images and content since they had limited access to the table in the classroom.
In fall 2021, we were fortunate to be able to return to fully in-person classes. This gave me the opportunity to use the table again in my integrated course and to think about how exactly I wanted to include the table. I decided on three goals for the year, emphasizing ways to use the table during my in-person courses. I also didn't want to have to reinvent my courses, so I was looking for ways to add in the table content to my existing course material. I know that adding new tech can be stressful and time consuming, so I kept it manageable, focusing on three specific goals. First, I wanted to increase my use of the table live in front of my students. Second, I wanted weekly student activities. My goal was to have students work with the table with every topic we covered, which basically meant each week they had an activity to complete, requiring them to use the table. And finally, I wanted to add customized images and screen recordings from the table to my existing course content. So my goal of increasing live use of the table in front of my class. Well, we're really fortunate because our setup really works for using the table in front of the class. Our table is in a classroom that has um, four televisions um, spaced out throughout the room. So I'm able to project from the table onto the TVs. And I also have a projection screen so that I can show Google Slides or um, outlines simultaneously and project from the table as well. To help with class presentations using the table, one of the new functions on table eight is the pointer tools. So you can open the pointer tool icon on the desktop and choose the type of pointer that you want. You've got some different options there and it even lets you customize the color of your pointer. So using the pointer tool, when you tap on structures on the cadaver, the pointer indicates where you've tapped and you can even click and drag it on the screen. And this is really helpful when you're projecting to screens in the classroom for students to clearly you know, see and focus on what you are indicating to them. Here's an example of what my live um, typical muscle presentation um, looks like. And I'm using the Asian female cadaver. So I'm going to use the visibility menu and isolate the muscular system. This is showing my students how to get to images they want to see as well. So I can position the cadaver in prone. And then turn 90 degrees which is really helpful when projecting to TVs in the class uh, for the students to see the cadaver in this perspective. So I usually talk about surrounding muscles and dissecting superficial structures, um, which is really nice. My students um, learn the 3D relationship and, and layered nature of the body. I can show my students superficial layers of trapezius, latissimus dorsi, and even deltoid, and the fact that we need to dis dissect those away to get to some deeper structures. So let's say we want to highlight some posterior scapular muscles. In this format, it's really nice because my students learn how to isolate each muscle. They can see the relationship of each muscle to, to muscles around it. And I tend to like color, so I do flat color 
uh, muscles that I'm focusing on, I think it really pops on the screen. Right, so as I'm talking through um, actions of muscles or bony attachments, um, students are seeing me um, highlight those specific muscles on the table. I also really like the bony landmark feature, and I use this to teach landmarks to my students during class. So again, this is the Asian female cadaver. And I'm going to use the visibility menu. And in this case, I'm going to isolate specifically the right femur. So I'm going to use the action menu to add color to the bony landmarks of the femur. So here they're nicely colored. And when I tap on a bony landmark, it will be annotated with the name of that landmark. So I can choose specific landmarks based on exactly what my students need to know. In addition, I'll often use the pen tool to draw specific attention to structures, which really helps to keep my students focused on what I'm talking about and engaged. It's really nice, the annotated landmarks track with the image as you move and rotate. So it's helpful for students to see the labeled structures from different viewpoints. Also too, as I'm demonstrating landmarks on the table, my students will be at their tables with their skeleton models and um, they'll work to identify corresponding structures on their models as well. Okay, so my second goal, which was to increase student activities. Um, I had the specific goal of weekly activities for each topic that we cover during the semester. And during class, I would often set this up as rotations through stations of activities with the table always being one of the stations. Okay, so I teach classes of 24. So um, I definitely have a lot in common with most of the audience here. Um, typically what I have set up is six stations throughout the classroom. So students work in groups of four at the table. And I found that groups of four work really nicely for them. Um, typically they'll divide up responsibilities. So there will be one student who's reading the instructions. One is documenting their work or answering questions related um, to the table activity. And they're all there just discussing um, the activity and the structures that they're, that they're looking at. Um, I think a common question is how can students use the table during rotations in class? Um, or what can I have them do? And honestly, I found that with my students that if I give clear instructions that they really enjoy their time on the table. So if I, if I just let them loose on the table without any sort of um, kind of introduction or practice, they don't really know what to do. And actually I find that a lot of them are very intimidated by the table. They're, they're afraid they're gonna mess it up. So my students really like having assignments to complete, um, at least in the beginning to help them gain confidence and how to use functions on the table. So one, this is one example of a table activity that I'll create for my students. And this uses the bony landmark feature on the table. This um, is an activity that will help students review landmarks that they need to learn and correlate them with landmarks on the skeleton um, models that we have in the classroom. This video is going to teach you how to create a bony landmark quiz on the Anatomology table. I'm going to first choose the bones that I want to include. Using the visibility menu, I'm going to highlight some of the upper limb bones 
that I want to focus on. So in our class, we're studying the upper extremity. So I'm going to choose the clavicles, the scapula, and the right and left humerus. So here's the image that I want to work with. And in order to add bony landmarks, I'm going to highlight each bone and pull up the action menu. So I can tap on my bony landmarks function and they highlight on each of the bones. If I tap on the highlighted area, those bony landmarks are going to be annotated. And by annotating them, they'll then be included in my quiz. I'm also adding some bony landmarks to the left scapula. And then by tapping on the right scapula, and again, pushing the bony landmarks function button, I can tap on the right posterior scapula and add some bony landmarks there as well. This way, my students get to practice identifying landmarks on both the left and right scapula, as well as anterior and posterior surfaces. Next, I'm gonna highlight the right humerus. open up the action menu, tap the bony landmarks function. And again, they're highlighted in all of these great colors. If I tap on the color, that specific bony landmark will be annotated and will be included in my quiz. Only the structures that are annotated will be included. So if there's a bony landmark that I don't want to include, then I just don't tap on it. And if it's not annotated, it's not gonna be asked on the quiz. I'm also including some bony landmarks on the left humerus as well. Okay, so here are all the bony landmarks that I want to include on my quiz for my students. These are the landmarks that we've been studying in class, and I want them to be able to um, come in after class and, and take these practice quizzes. So I'm going to save this image as a preset, and I'm saving it as preset one. Next, I can highlight that preset by tapping on the one and click add to folder. I already have a folder set up, it's called Williamson, and this is where I like to keep all my presets. So I'm going to double tap my Williamson folder, and now I'm gonna name my preset. So I'm naming my preset practice quiz, and it's in my Williamson folder. Okay, and, and then I want to show you what a typical bony landmark quiz looks like. And I, I say quiz, but I kind of use these as more activities um, during station work or in class. And also students can come into the lab um, after classes and finish them up or continue to practice with them. I keep it pretty low stakes. Um, I do encourage students to collaborate um, with each other when they're working with the table. Um, these quizzes are very functional because you can customize the bony landmarks you want to test and make it very specific to what your students have learned in class. So this is using, using the flashcards quiz. Um, students are asked to identify specific bony landmarks. They tap on the bony landmark and um, it gives them feedback on whether they got the question right or not. So if they choose the wrong landmark, it shows them the correct one and they benefit from that immediate feedback. Students also practice identifying left and right sides of the body and they get some practice manipulating images on the screen as well.
So again, if students make the wrong choice, it gives them some feedback so they can, so they can learn from their mistake. At the end of the quiz, it gives them their results. And you can even get a more detailed view of that and tease out particular um, structures to see if they got them right or not. And this way, students have some very targeted feedback so they know what they need to work on. So students have a chance to begin these activities um, such as the practice quizzes during class when we're doing rotations, but because of the size of my classes, they rarely are able to fully complete the activities. So since students often complete um, these activities outside of class time, I do include very specific directions so that they know how to access the material, and it also helps the student lab assistants that we have helping our students. So here's an example of some of the directions that I would give my students for um, completing their bony landmarks quiz. I use Google Docs and I'm going to include information about how they um, can load the quiz. So here I'm instructing them to choose the Asian um, female full body cadaver, um, open up quiz mode, and then they're going to um, tap load and then quiz history. And typically what I'll do is I'll preload these quizzes for them. So under quiz history, the quiz will pop up. It will um, auto populate with the quiz that I want them to use. And um, in this case, it's a lower extremity bony landmarks quiz. I'll even give them screenshots of what um, the correct setting should look like so that they know that they are in the right place. So in this case, they've got the quiz name. Um, the type of quiz is flashcards like we saw before. And then I'm asking them to um, touch the structure on the table to identify it during the quiz. And then once they get their results, they're going to take a picture just with their phone on the table and share it with me on their Google form. So this is what the Google form looks like so that they have a place to share their results with me. So it's very simple there. I'm basically just asking them to upload a photo of their quiz results. And that way I know that they um, completed the activity. Okay, here's an example of a practice quiz activity um, on muscle identification. So again, my students would begin to work on this type of activity during class time, um, but would typically use time outside of class to finish the activity. So they are gonna open up quiz mode. And this is again using um, the flashcard setting. So the students are given the name of a muscle that they need to tap on to identify. Again, they're gonna get practice manipulating images on the table, maybe even removing superficial structures to see deeper structures. The flashcards quiz um, is, is a favorite of ours because my students do really like the feedback. They like to know if they got the answer right or not. It also helps them to um, identify left and right. So they're having to um, think about that as well. And also too, if they do happen to choose an incorrect muscle, it's going to let them know and it also shows them the correct muscle. There's another quiz setting too, that's a favorite of my students. And I'm just gonna show you, it's the same quiz in a different format. This is um, using the highlight quiz type. And in this case, a muscle is highlighted on the body. So students have to manipulate the image to zoom in um, and rotate to get a good view. And then this is just a really helpful mode 
if students want to practice recall um, as well as spelling. So it'll also give you the right answer too, so they can check their work. So I have a similar setup when I post um, muscle quizzes too, where I've got a Google Doc with instructions for my students so they know exactly how to get to the um, quiz that they need. I'll include um, a screenshot of um, the quiz icon on the table so they know where to look. And on this one, I even included um, steps that they needed to go, go through in order to get to the right um, quiz. So step one is to tap quiz. Step two is load. Three is quiz history. They're gonna pick the right quiz and then hit apply. And then if they've done everything correctly, this is what their screen should look like. So they all know they're in the right place. So it tends to work really well. Um, you know, having that level of detail with the steps of where they need to be. And then, um, and similar to the bony landmarks, this is um, a Google form where they can share their results with me. So they're just gonna take a picture of their results and um, share it with me there. So I put links to the Google Docs and Forms with all of their Anatomage table assignments on Moodle. We use Moodle as our LMS. This is also efficient because I can reuse them again next fall semester. I just clear the responses from the Google Form and they're ready to go again. And I don't have to recreate or reinvent activities each time. When my students share work with me, the image on the right is um, usually what they upload to the Google form. So it shows their responses or the results of their quizzes or images that they've created on the screen and uploaded. Um, the Google form also gives me a list of all the students who responded so that I can give them credit for completing the work. Um, in addition to practice quizzes, I also ask students to create images on the table using the visibility menu to isolate relevant structures um, based on the um, topic that we're working on that week or the type of assignment that they're going to be doing. They can then either flat color or edit these images based on the assignment. For example, for our articulations topic, each fall, students are given a list of joints that they need to know. I also test them by having them identify specific joints on images. So it's nice for them to have images of these joints to, to put everything together. For the past few years, I've asked them to create a Google slide presentation highlighting each of the joints on the list. But this past fall, I decided to include the table in on the assignments by asking students to create images of the joints on the table. So here's one example of that type of an assignment. My final goal was to add table images to my existing course content. I wanted to explore ways to make my course content more consistent. And I really like how the images look on the table, especially with the color options. I also like how customizable I can make the images to match exactly what my students are learning in class. I found that I was also using images from the table in testing. So I wanted to make sure that students had access to these images so that they could study outside of the classroom. This is an example of a table screenshot using the highlighted bony landmarks function. Then I annotated by hand using the GoodNotes app on my iPad. Here are some additional examples of annotated images that I've included in presentations and course handouts.
So this video um, shows one way that you can annotate images from the table. So here's a video on how to annotate images from the Anatomosh table using your iPad. So on the table here, I have the Asian female cadaver pulled up. And in our class, we've been studying the upper limb um, skeletal system. And so what I wanted to do was um, highlight a couple of the upper extremity bones with their bony landmarks for my students and specifically list bony landmarks that they need to know. So I've got the radius and ulna here. And this is the image that I'm gonna be working with. I'm going to highlight the right radius, open up the action menu, and highlight the bony landmarks on the radius. I can do the same thing for the ulna with the action menu, um, tap the bony landmarks function, and now they're all nicely colored and they look beautiful on the table. Now I want to take a screenshot of this, and that's pretty easy to do on the table as well. I'm just going to highlight the area that I want the screenshot to be. And I'm going to save the screenshot to the desktop of the table. So that's going to save to the desktop. And my table is not hooked up to our network. So I have to um, put in my USB thumb drive. And I'm going to drag my image to my thumb drive and copy it onto my drive. Next, I'm going to take that drive and put it into my desktop. So I'm going to open it up. I'm going to find the image that I want to work with. And since I'm working with um, my iPad, I can just airdrop that image directly into my iPad. So that's going to be saved on my camera roll on my iPad. So the app I'm using is called Good Notes, and you can find it in the App Store. And this is my image in my camera roll. I'm going to share it with Good Notes, and it pulls up as an option down at the bottom of this menu. And I can import that image as a new document. So here's my JPEG from the Anatomosh table. I do want to rotate it so I can work with it, so I can rotate it clockwise. And now I can start annotating the image with the structures that I want my students to learn. I think these images are really nice because the colors really pop on them. And it also helps because I can annotate specific image, specific landmarks that my students are responsible for. I think it also helps too because my students are able to see consistent images between uh, working on the table and their course resources like handouts for lab and um, Google Slides that I use during class. And that's what my completed image looks like with my annotation. So if you don't use an iPad, you can also edit screenshots or annotate on the table itself. Here's an example of how I'm using these images. 
I already had handouts for my students with information about each group of muscles that they need to know when we're doing the muscular system. I wanted to include a picture with each of the muscles um, onto the handouts that I already had. So I took screenshots um, and flat colored and annotated each muscle group and added those images to my handout. So they paired uh, really nicely together. Here's another example of using annotated table images. Um, I post these on handouts for students and I also put copies in the cadaver lab so students can correlate these beautifully flat colored images with the muscles on the cadavers. It's a great place for students to start and then they can take that information and apply it um, to the cadavers as well. Um, it's also helpful because with being able to customize the images, I'm able to group the muscles on the images so that they're consistent with the groups on the outline. Here's an example of embedding table video um, into my Google Slides. I just updated to table eight over the winter break. So I'm just getting to explore some of the physiology functions that are new. Um, I love the idea of adding table videos to my slides to make them more visually appealing and engaging. So you can screen record right from the table and then just take that um, screen recording and drop it into your um, slides. Here's another example of adding videos to my slides. Um, table eight has the function of kinesiology and this provides a great supplement for students learning the muscles and then combining muscles and actions um, both in the classroom and then now they have access to um, these slides visualizing joint movements and the relevant muscles um, outside of the classroom as well. I just wanted to include some feedback from students um, when asked about resources that we have available in our anatomy and physiology courses. Um, my students really enjoy using the table and um, help find that it helps them understand the course material more effectively. So it gives them another tool to work with um, in the class. So we have some great um, feedback from our students, which was fantastic. <laughs> 